July, the naked city, but with clothes. This is my city, the city I live in, the city of angels. Lonely as I am, together we cry. I'd just been congratulating myself on solving another case I didn't get paid for. A case of the headless chick with a nice rack. Trouble is, my client was the one that done it. Fingering your client don't always pay the bill. See, I'm a gumshoe. A private dick. A snoop. Beagle. Bird dog. Bloodhound. Private eye. Private investigator. Peeper. Slewfoot. A P.I. Name's Spade Marlowe. Some know me as the Spade, Mighty Marlowe, or Madame Frufu. But I was once an all witness as of being silenced. Today is like any other day, only more so. My day was miserable. Nothing amiss there. Then she walked in and trampled it like a wad hog under a tap dancing Las Vegas elephant with tetanus. This classy dame coughed up some cockamamie story about her missing kid sister. I didn't believe her. I believed her $50 a day plus expenses. She had a German accent she tried to hide, but I wasn't fooled. Then she gave me a photo. Well, that's not the only thing she gave me. But you don't need to know about that. I should have known better. She's the kind of dame who spells trouble T-R-O-B-L. Who cares if she's itinerant? I was under her like an ex-smoker licking an ashtray. I didn't trust her. I trusted the money. You know, I can't remember the last time I had a decent meal since Fido died. Fact is, my last case reminded me that being a private dick doesn't always pay the bills. She refused my sandwich. This broad could make a starving man hand over his last meal and then ask if he could cook her dessert. I'd let her lick my plate any day. She couldn't exactly talk the leg of a vampire, but with a body like that, this dame wasn't in it for the conversation. With not much to go, I decided to go downtown. I had to solve this case. I got my coat, and I headed out. Out cold, that is. When I awoke, my head felt like a family of Frenchmen had moved in and soiled the cabin. My mouth felt like an ashtray. I hadn't been tied up like this for years. And this is the first time I haven't had to pay for it. I didn't know it was shining that light, but they smell strongly of cheap perfume and desperation. Well, if it ain't the kid's sister. The lost kid's sister. She didn't look that lost, and she was nothing like her supposed lost sister. The only similarity being they both had a German accent. I'd sooner believe Hitler to be my long-lost Aryan brother than the two dames were related. Case closed in record time. I wouldn't have minded a few more weeks on the case. All I'd do now is to convince this dame to untie me and collect my cash. And with my charm and wit, a mere formality. This may take a little longer than I thought. Throughout the ritual beatings and punishment, they kept asking me about my connection with the brunette dame. They asked me what was the square root of 4,761. Then about what I knew about dialectical materialism. They soon realized I knew nothing. I was about as effective as a chocolate fireman. And 
they dealt with it. I had to join the dots without a crayon. One femme fatale, one sadistic mother of supposed kid sister, a bunch of German accents, and one massive headache. This case was harder to get onto than one out of control kid's roundabout in the rain with a broken leg. Then it hit me. Nice family reunion. Like the Osmonds, but without the incest, fistfights, and crack cocaine. I thought I had this case all sewn up, but it's at this stage that the Ninja Death Monkeys crash the party. <laughs> My pants are made of cheese! So, did I tell you by the time I convinced Yul Brenner that Hollywood wasn't good for him? I said to him, Yul, never work in this town again. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>